Hi there, Mrs. Vaughn here. Today we're going to look at energy and heat. We're going to be looking at the basics today. We're taking it to the equation Q equals mc delta t in this video. So as I just said, we have an equation that relates some of our different variables with heat and energy and temperature that's called Q equals mc delta t. We're going to use that to find any of those variables. So Q is going to represent heat. Remember, heat is the transfer of energy from hot to cold. So this is going to have energy units like kilojoules or joules or calories. M represents mass. So just like before, with mass, you're going to see most often grams or kilograms in our chemistry class. C represents specific heat. So specific heat is kind of special. Specific heat is going to have the units. We're going to have energy over mass times a temperature. So the one that I've put in your notes, we have joules per grams degrees Celsius. But it's always going to be a unit of energy over a unit of mass times a unit of temperature. The other piece of this equation is going to be our delta T. Remember, delta is our Greek letter. It just represents change in science. So delta T is literally the temperature change. Another way we can think of delta T is this. Delta T is equal to our final temperature, represented by Tf, minus our initial temperature, represented by Ti. So delta T could be written as this if it tells you what that temperature change is, or we can do it longhand and take our final temperature, our initial temperature, and make sure we subtract those in the correct order. It will always be our final minus our initial when we're talking about a temperature change. When it comes to solving these problems, we're going to use our same general strategy that we have used for our gas laws and our other problems. So first of all, we're going to take the information that we know. We're going to make sure we write that down. We're going to write down the variable, the number, and the units. We're making sure that we put all of that information there so it's all in the same spot. Secondly, we're going to identify what we do not know. Another way to think about this is the question and what it wants us to find. And then finally, it's as simple as plugging our information into the equation, and then we will solve. One quick note about Q. Q can be positive or it could be negative. So if energy is absorbed, that means Q is going to be positive. So we're going to have a positive sign with it. But if energy is released, that means Q is going to be less than zero. And you will want to put a negative sign with this to make sure that you keep everything the right direction, either positive or negative. So the reason, if we think about this, if energy is absorbed, that means we're taking energy in. That's an endothermic process, the taking in of energy. When energy is released, it's exothermic. So it's being released to our surroundings, and we have less energy in our substance. So therefore, that negative sign makes sense. I hope this was helpful. If there's anything I can do, please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions. Thank you and good luck.